Um, yes, I'm a psych dog trainer. The name of my business is Canine Communication. And so I'm going to talk to you a lot about body language. Dogs communicate uh, with their bodies. So if you understand how to read their body language, you are going to understand a lot about what they're trying to tell you. Uh, as Pat Miller, she's a dog trainer, has written a number of uh, terrific books. As she says, you learn to listen to your dog with your eyes. Okay, so uh, shelter dogs, you have to remember that they are coming from uh, recent traumas or traumatic events, uh, being astray and, and free roaming on the streets, and then they get pulled away. Maybe they were in a house, maybe they were astray, but from everything that was familiar to them, they now have been removed from that and they have no idea why, of course. Um, some of them have physical issues. Uh, they may be uh, malnutrition, they may have injuries, uh, potentially have been neglected. And so imagine from the dog's perspective how stressed and stressful it would be to be plucked from everything you know, and in some cases, uh, you know, put into a crate, put into a van, driven along um, stretch or even put into an airplane and then made their way to Providence Animal Center. Um, if they've been spayed or neutered, or if, again, if they've had physical issue, then they've been through major surgery. So all of these things um, are going to accumulate to uh, cause a dog who's going to be stressed. So see a dog and you know, well, you have a dog, you can interact with the dog in, in a certain way, you're familiar family um, member, it's not the case with these dogs. So just recognizing that right off the bat, that they're going to be um, coming from a stressful place is super important. Providence Animal Center does a lot to minimize stress uh, with things like spraying lavender, getting uh, enrichment items so that they can feed out of a puzzle. But no matter how much they do, um, to minimize the stress, it's impossible to completely remove it. So it is going to be a stressful environment, and some of those stress are just being confined to a kennel. Uh, all of the smells and sounds that surround them, uh, they're going to hear the dogs barking. They're going to see lots of people in and out, uh, doors opening and closing. Everything is completely new and unpredictable, and because of that, it's stressful to dog. Uh, they may have uh, be taken from one kennel and then moved to another kennel. Um, just even being inside, if they were an outdoor dog, that's very different. So the smells, the sounds, the people, all of this is new, confusing, and stressful to the dog. Okay, so how do you know that the dog is stressed? Um, how can you tell by looking at the dog? Well, you can look everywhere on the dog. Again, they're communicating with their bodies and all of their bodies. They're from their tail to their nose, they are communicating to you how they're feeling. So, uh, for example, if you look at their forehead, um, it could be tight, stress. Some dogs, you can really see the furrow in their brow um, and their body. What position are their body? Is it is the back kind of humped over? Are they crouching? Um, and their feet? Their ears, what position their ears are in, that's going to tell you if the dog is stressful. Um, and their eyes, um, we're going to get into that later. I'll show you some examples of the dogs with eyes that communicate that they are stressed. Their coat, how their, uh, their fur looks, uh, the position of their mouth, and of course their tail. Um, even if they have just a little bit of a tail, the position of the tail is going to tell you a lot about how they feel. Okay, for example, let's take lip licking. Now, this isn't the all around, mm, I just ate peanut butter and it's really delicious kind of a lip lick. Um, that's just licking their lips. A lip lick is more like they quickly touched their nose and it went back in. You know, I think of like a snake with a tongue goes, darts out and comes back. Um, another uh, trainer that I know used to describe it more of like checking to make sure the nose is still there. It's like a quick, in out of the tongue. Um, that's telling you that the dog is um, stressed. So maybe if you are uh, looking down, staring directly at the dog, which is just so you know, a stressful thing for you to do, um, 
then you're going to see the tongue go out and come back in. Um, you know, I've watched people put harnesses on a dog and you can see it in the tongue. The dog feels about that harness. That's a, that indicates to you that the dog is uncomfortable. Um, and it's sort of a dog's way of like a low value way of saying, I'm uncomfortable with what you're doing. Don't stare at me. Don't, don't come towards me. And I, because what you're doing um, is stressful to me. So that is a good thing. It's more of a subtle thing. It's kind of quick, but it's a good thing to look out for when you're looking at the dog and trying to figure out how stressed the dog is. Yawning is another way to look at the dog and think, hmm, I think that you are stressed um, right now by the situation. So sometimes, of course, a yawn is just a yawn. If the dog woke up for a nap and it gives you a big yawn, you know, that could just be a yawn. Um, but what if it's out of context? What if you've brought the dog out and you're in the field walking the dog and you're seeing it stop and give a big yawn? Um, it's an unlikely that that dog is thinking, oh, I'd like to take a nap. I'm tired. That's more likely a stress yawn. A lot of these uh, ways to understand whether the dog's stressful from lip lick, yawn, um, are taken together. So if you see a, several of them, a lip lick and then a several yawns, um, then in a cluster of those kind of signals, then you see, yep, I, that is really stress. Panting and is another way to tell whether a dog is stressed. Um, along panting, if they're rapid, rapidly panting, they're rapidly breathing, the heart rate is elevated. Um, now, if it's a warm day and they're panting, they're thirsty, or they just went out and were playing in the big yard, for example, that's a, a panting. But if they come out, it's not a warm day, and they're looking around, sort of scanning the environment, and you see them panting, you see their uh, sides of their body, um, you know, going in and out quickly, like a rapid rate breathing, um, that's a stress panting. Um, you can see it like a dog who maybe was fine just walking normally and then you put the dog in the car and it starts panting. That tells me that dog is uncomfortable, maybe it's never been in a car before or it's not sure what's happening. Um, then it's stressed by being in the car. So these are good things to be aware of and to understand. Um, again, and what's the dog trying to communicate and how is the dog feeling? So there's a shake off. A shake off just, it looks like the dog was wet and it shakes off, but it's not wet. I would bet about nine out of 10 dogs when you bring them outside, the first thing they do, they do a big shake off. That's sort of a like, Whew, that's kind of stressful. Um, and again, if they're wet and they're, or they just went swimming and they shake off, well, you know, it's about the water. But in this case, pay attention to the dog when you bring them outside. They do a big shake off. It's like, whew, boy, I was stressed in there. Um, so that's another indicator um, and good thing to look out for. Here's a good picture of a whale eye. Uh, the dog has turned its eyes, keeping an eye on the person taking the picture, but hasn't turned its head towards the person. Um, he looks distrustful. I think anybody looking at this photo can tell this dog doesn't look like he's inviting the person taking the picture to come interact with him. It's more, I'm concerned, what are you doing? Maybe why are you pointing that camera at me? but it doesn't look like a happy dog inviting the person to interact. This is the kind of thing that it's really good to pay attention to. Pay attention to what the dog is telling you. And to me, when I look at this photo, this is a dog trying to communicate that I'm uncomfortable with what you're doing and I prefer you to increase the distance between you and I, like back off, please. Um, he has not turned his head He's only turned his eye, keeping an eye on the person in case they do something scary. So pay attention to this kind of thing. If you see this in the kennel, that a dog is looking at you this way, I would recommend toss a treat and just keep walking, and then walk by, toss a treat, keep walking. Sort of a drive-by, toss a treat. Uh, you will likely see a change in the dog's expression, and you will see that white part disappear as the dog looks at you in anticipation of a treat, 
rather than, uh oh, why are you here? You're making me worried. I'm willing to bet that all of you watching this slide presentation would not approach this dog. Why? Well, this one you clearly the hackles. See the fur up on the on the dog's back? Sometimes you'll see it going all the way from their shoulder down to their tail. The official word for this is pilo erection. Um, but this dog is saying back off now. So maybe a lip lick would be a low volume way for a dog to tell you, could you please step away? This dog is saying, you haven't paid attention to me. You're way too close, back off. I don't wanna bite you, but I will if I have to. So uh, what is it in addition to the hackles that you see that's telling you? Notice the position of the dog's head. Um, look at their mouth. The e position of the ears are down, the mouth is closed and actually getting smaller. Um, and it is a direct uh, looking at the thing back off um, or I may have to escalate. So this is a dog truly uncomfortable, has raised the volume to, I'm gonna bite you if I have to. Um, if you see a dog doing this, that dog is clearly a dog that you're not gonna interact with uh, because it's telling you for whatever reason, it's uncomfortable with you. If any of you have ever heard the phrase, don't get yourself up in a dander, well, here's where it comes from. Look at the German Shepherd's coat. Now you can see all that dandruff in the coat. Um, I don't know about you, but when I take my dog to the vet, she's nervous and I have a black dog, I have two black dogs, but you will see in her coat, in her shiny black coat, when she gets to the vet, it kind of looks like the German Shepherd. All of that uh, dander is up, the dandruff. And um, in the Pyrenees, that's like a huge amount. That's blowing their coat. They are so frightened. It's interesting because it is part of their physiological response to a fearful situation. Um, they want to shed extra weight. They're going to uh, shed their coat like this Pyrenees um, so that they can get ready to fight or to flight, <laughs> to run away or to, to fight it out. Um, but take notice of the dog's coat. And if you take, if you have a dog and you take your dog to the vet, look at their coat and see, oh, I don't remember my dog having dandruff. You'll know um, that it's because your dog is stressed in that situation. Here's a hard stare. Look at the dog on the left. Um, he's not giving whale eye. He's looking directly at the person. But is this uh, inviting you to interact? It's a hard stare of like, you want a piece of me kind of a look. Um, he's not sure what to do, but he's not comfortable with the photographer or the person in front of him. There's tightness. I don't know if you can see it, but there's tightness uh, along his forehead, in his eyes, his mouth is closed, and he's staring directly. Um, in the picture on the right, you can see that the chocolate lab is doing the same thing to the other dog. And the, uh, what is the other dog doing? The other dog is smart. He knows dog body language. He's turning, blinking his eyes, saying, hey, I'm not here to cause any trouble. I'm just minding my own business. Uh, you can be like that dog and do the same thing. So if a dog is looking at you like the dog in the picture on the left, you can do what the uh, tan and white dog is doing. Turn your head, blink, look away, that's you telling the dog, hey, I'm not here to cause any trouble. I'm just minding my own business. No worries. Um, I, I'm not going to uh, fight you, take you on, or uh, attack you. <laughs> this slide shows two different body postures, both telling you that the dog is not relaxed and not necessarily comfortable with, with uh, you or that other dog in the one picture. Um, that he's not comfortable with that. So the dog on the left, you can see by the uh, lots of things. So let's look at the body. The back is sort of a, a U, upside down U sort of uh, position. The tail is dropped. It's not exactly tucked, but it's kind of tight, right? The head is lowered. This is a dog almost giving an appeasing um, position saying, please don't hurt me. Um, I don't mean any offense to you. Um, don't hurt me. The dog on the right 
is also um, concerned and saying, you want a piece of me kind of thing. Notice it's forward on its front feet. Uh, look at the tail. The tail is up like an arousal, not a uh, friendly wag. The head is up. You can see that furrowed brow in this dog. Um, and notice what the other dog is doing. The other dog is turning around, sort of loose. Hey, I'm just, again, minding my own business. I'm not here to cause any trouble. So, but both positions, even though they're very different, are telling you that the dog is worried and thinks it either has to fight or has to beg forgiveness um, so that it's uh, not going to be hurt by you or by the other dog. So look at the brown dog in this photo. He looks very tense. Even though it's still a photo, you can tell he's standing sort of locked in with legs. The tail is straight up, the head is up, and he's turned probably, although we can't see it, has a whale eye in this situation. He's telling that other dog, I'm uncomfortable, don't make any other moves. The, the black dog with the red collar is saying, okay, and has lowered its head, uh, closed its eyes, saying, oops, sorry, I must have done something that was rude or made you uncomfortable. It's okay, don't worry. Again, we can take tips from that dog with the red collar and um, do that with dogs that if they look worried in the kennel, turning your head, blinking your eyes, looking away, that's going to communicate to the dog in the kennel if he's worried about you that, oh, okay, that person's not here to do me any harm. Or photo bomber dog <laughs> in the foreground. Um, you see a little bit, you could say that's a whale eye. I don't know if it's just the reflection, but that's a pretty happy mouth. See the tongue hanging off the side and there's looks like there's a big grin. He's your classic uh, photo bomber happy dog. <laughs> um, but he's, he's away from the situation and, um, you know, not looking like he's worried. Again, here are two different postures. Uh, both telling you that the dog is uncomfortable. On the left, the little whippet or mini greyhound has his tail, or Italian greyhound maybe, I'm not sure. His tail is tucked. It's all the way in. That is protecting himself. If you see the tail go down and tucked like that, that dog is worried. Uh, notice again the, the uh, curve in the back and that lowered head. Uh, you can also see that the closed mouth and the furrowed brow, the ears are lowered. Um, that's, so sometimes we look at a dog like that and we go, it's okay, buddy. And we go over and pet them as if to comfort them. And while that's a well-meaning thing to do, it's not the best idea. Because if that dog is saying, I'm uncomfortable, could you take a few steps back? He is not asking you to take a few steps forward and pet him. He actually wants you to go back until he feels more comfortable. So this is not a dog that I would go over and go, it's okay, buddy, let me pat you on the head. This is a dog that I would do what that other dog was doing and sort of turn myself sideways and, you know, look around as if I'm waiting for a bus, let him choose the interaction, which is always a good idea. And then when he comes over, just say, oh, hi, and pet him and then look away or give him a treat or even toss a treat away. That way you're giving two reinforcers. One, you're giving distance from you, the scary thing, and two, the treat at the end, of course. So this is not a dog that's saying, please come hug me and make me feel better. This is a dog saying, you're scaring me. Could you back off, please? The dog on the right, I don't know, would you approach him? I would not because he is, looks to me like he is trying to decide, friend or foe, the tail is up, head is way up, the mouth is closed, he's staring. Um, this is also a dog that I would turn away, kind of the same thing as the other dog. I would turn away and walk. Um, I would not approach. I would respect uh, his request of stack distance, please. Here are three terrific photos that show body language communication with the dog. The little black dog is worried. The low ears, see the, uh, the head, the lowered ears, and the eyes, the whale eye. Um, that's not a dog, again, that's not a dog saying, please come comfort me. That's a dog saying, uh-oh, you're scaring me. Uh, the dog on the right, 
you see lots of things. Those ears are forward, but also there's actually a lip lift. Uh, you can see there's a snarl, see a little bit of the teeth coming up. You can see the snout is kind of mushed up and they're very forward. That dog is clearly saying, get away from me. You're really worrying. Um, you're really worrying me. Now the other dog, see ears, the ears are lowered. So it depends. Sometimes back to offensive, defensive behavior. Um, in both situations, they're trying to communicate that they're not comfortable. Uh, this ear dog and the uh, golden dog in the middle, his ears are lowered. And that is a really wonderful picture of a lip lick. See how it's like, mm, is my nose there? I bet that just went in and out um, or out and in, I guess. So all three of these pictures are dogs that are communicating to you, I'm really uncomfortable. And when a dog communicates to you that they're uncomfortable, you need to adjust what you're doing. All right, here, let's talk about calming signals. Talked about it a little bit before in the earlier slides, but here are two photographs of dogs giving calming signals. Dogs are communicating to either the person or another dog that like, hey, I am not here to fight, I'm just minding my own business. Some dogs will sit down abruptly and just start scratching. Um, that saying, I'm obviously not going to come attack you, I'm just minding my own business, uh, you know, scratching myself. Or I'm just checking up the grass and sniffing and uh, no, nothing to see here. I'm not interested in taking you on, I'm just minding my own business. Um, we, uh, as the people in the scenario can also give calming signals. Again, we look around, um, blink, look off, walk away, meander. Uh, that's telling the dog, listen, I'm not here to attack you or hurt you. I'm just minding my own business. If a dog is really, really worried and really stressed, it may sweat through the pads of its paws. So if it hasn't gone, if it's dry, it hasn't just gone through a puddle, of course, and you start to see footprints, that dog is real stressed. I, I don't know that I see this very often or hardly at all. I would say it's pretty rare, but if I saw that, that all of a sudden that dog is so worried that it's, it's perspiring through its pads, then um, I'm going to immediately change whatever it is I'm doing or try to get this dog in a situation where it can, um, it can relax a little bit. And um, I don't want to add any kind of stress to a dog that I see sweating out the pads of its paws. I really like how this slide says, slow down, please, because it's not necessarily back away. I don't want anything to do with you. It's just saying, maybe you're coming on a little too strong. Might like to interact with you, uh, but you need to take it slower and let me approach you and don't come on so strong. Uh, I think that is a good message for all of them. If the dog learns it can approach you and initiate the interaction, that's always better. But the little, uh, I guess, long-haired chihuahua with his paw up, that is something a paw is up. I'm a little bit worried about this or do I need to be worried? And if we, instead of facing directly, we sort of oriented ourselves sideways and let the, the little guy approach and let him sniff us and then put our hand out to see if he wants us to pet, that would be a good approach for him. Um, now the dog on the right, I guess the border collie, a lot of times we see a dog do that and we think, oh, you want me to rub your belly. And sometimes that's the case, but I would pay attention to the dog's expression, to his face, to his tail. This tail is a little bit tucked. Um, just from the still photograph that I'm looking at. Um, sometimes it's more of a white flag, don't shoot kind of move, not a invitation to pet my belly. Um, so slowing down, letting the dog initiate the interaction is a really good approach. Okay, so I'm guessing I don't need to tell any of you watching this slideshow that this is a dog that's saying, back away. I don't want you to approach me. I definitely don't want you to pet me. You can see the whale eye, um, you know, presumably he's growling, snapping and barking. It, it looks like he's definitely barking, um, but that is a dog that's not saying bark, bark, bark. I'm so happy to see you. You see the whole thing where he's even 
sort of leaning away from the person taking the picture. Uh, you get that whale eye, and he's barking and growling, saying, back off. This dog, perhaps, was giving a lift lick and maybe just a whale eye, or maybe turning, orienting their body away from the person, and the person wasn't picking up on the more subtle uh, request for distance, and so he's had to up it a notch. Um, so that's why it's really important to pay attention to the subtle request for space so that the dog has, doesn't have to elevate it to this level. Okay, I'm gonna let you watch this video, but I'll tell you a little bit of the background of this. This dog, the day before, uh, had gone out onto the ice. I think there was a fox on the ice that had sort of fallen through. The dog went on the ice, it also fell through, and a police officer, officer came and saved the day, saved the dog, I think unfortunately not the fox, but they made it onto the news the next day. Now the owner decided to bring the dog uh, onto the stage, I don't know why, not with a leash, and so he's holding the dog tight. And if you think about fight and flight, this dog had nowhere to go, and he's holding the dog really, really tight. Watch for the signals, those low volume signals that I had talked about. Do you see a lip lick? What does the forehead look like? Does the face look tight? What about a whale eye? Do you see any turning of the head saying, back please, you're too close, you're too close? Unfortunately, uh, the person interpreted the lip lick as I want to kiss, and it didn't work out well with her. Um, but I'm especially happy to meet you after your story yesterday. What is it a mastiff, right? He's a Dogo Argentina. A, oh, okay. So uh, he's an Argentinian mastiff. Okay, yes. okay. The gorgeous, the gorgeous. Oh, I'm so glad you're okay. You too. Thank you you too. Thank goodness for you. Um, gosh, have a great weekend. So here's a video of what not to do. A dog with his food is saying, could you please let me eat my food and stop threatening me? The posture of the person is confrontational. So it's exactly the opposite of what you wanna do. And the dog, and the, to the dog's credit, is, is trying to say back away in multiple, multiple ways that we've seen. That's that pay attention to the quiet requests and because then he doesn't have to up the volume. Um, and in this case, the person didn't see any of it, uh, didn't interpret the signals and kept being confrontational and you see what happens. That's not submission. I have to give him a moment because the brain is got stuck this way. Yeah. So just stay there. She didn't do that to you earlier. No, not like that. Right. <laughs> no, no, it's not at all. Okay. No, this is the first time I see you. Yeah. yeah. So you see, it's just a relaxation. It's 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 a, it's, a, it's an understanding. <laughs> that coming. Okay, so now that I've stressed you all by watching those stressful videos, let's talk about the happier stuff, signs of relaxation in dogs. Um, where do you look to see it? Again, everywhere. You're going to look at the whole dog's body, again, from nose to tail, and um, to find out how that dog's feeling, what it's communicating to you. Uh, this dog, see what I mean about looking all the way to the person, 
no whale eye here. It's just, hi, I'm having a great time with this other dog. What are you doing? See that tail, like our photo bomber dog? It's, I mean, tail, the tongue, I mean, sticking out the side and a big grin on his face. The tail is wagging, uh, body looks a little bit loose. That is a dog telling you like, hi, I'm having a great time, join the party. Um, again, I would still say like, hi, what are you doing? And let the dog approach you. But this dog is a happier dog and not threatened by your presence. For those of you who have a dog, does your dog ever give you those kind of blinky, squinty eyes? You're petting your dog, telling your dog how much you love them, and they're doing the little blink, blink, blink. Um, those are soft eyes. This is directly in contrast to that other dog that was giving the hard stare. Um, that blink, blink, oh, I like you kind of eyes um, uh, that he's comfortable and happy with your presence. And you can make your eyes soft too. I think we forget about that a lot of times. If we're staring at a dog thinking, wow, you're really cute, we may unintentionally be um, acting in a confrontational way to the dog. So we can be kind of blinky and have soft eyes as well. And the dog would interpret that um, as a, a, a nice inviting uh, uh, facial expression. Here is one of my favorite things that when I see a dog do the play bow, that's pretty hard to think that this dog wants anything other than to play. This is an invitation to play. Um, I, if you see two dogs together and one does this, you know that dog is saying, come on, party, let's play. So that's a really nice thing to say and to see. And it's hard to interpret that in any other way other than, hey, I want to play. You look fun. So that's lovely to see. Even though this is a still photo, you can still see that it's a relaxed body. Um, it's not stiff. The tail is a nice wag. There's a big grin. Uh, the ears are relaxed. The dog doesn't look tight. Uh, loose is good. A tightness, a stillness, that's something to watch out for. <laughs> and if your dog, or the dog in the shelter rather, is uh, wagging its whole body, that wiggle butt, along with its tail, then that's a pretty happy uh, tail. You know, all wags are not created equally. There'll be the tail that's at the top of straight up over the back, uh, wagging back and forth rapidly. I think of it as a scorpion tail. That's not necessarily a happy wag, but when you get the whole body involved in the, in the wag, then you can guess that that is probably a very happy dog. Okay, now would you approach this dog? All right, that's a little bit of a trick question because remember what I do? I always let the dog approach me rather than approaching the dog. But if I were to approach this dog, I would say this dog is inviting. Look at that play bow and that happy grin and looking at you um, directly, but the face isn't hard. And it's like, hi, I wanna play with you. Um, so yes, it would be, if I were to approach a dog, I would approach this dog because the dog is giving me an invitation that it's happy about the approach. Okay, so what about this dog? We see lots of things that we recognize in this dog. This dog is definitely saying, do not approach me. I don't want you to hug me and pet me and try to comfort me. I would like you to take a couple steps back. I'm uncomfortable with your presence. That's what this body language is saying. Um, the ears, look how pale. See that uh, upside down U the, the, in the back, um, the, the standing back, the weight on the back end of the dog, um, that's a dog that's definitely uncomfortable and you would not approach this dog. If you walked away from the dog and he was curious and took a couple approaches, that would be a good thing, but then you still go, okay, now I will approach you. You let the dog initiate the interaction, but this is not a dog that's looking for you to come over and uh, comfort him. All right, so what do you think about this dog? This to me is a big happy grin. Uh, soft uh, eyes, I mean it is staring and sometimes it's hard with the photograph as opposed to the real thing, but that dog looks like a happy dog. 
um, not uncomfortable with your presence. So um, that dog looks like one who's saying, hi, who are you? Do you want to be my friend? As opposed to, uh-oh, could you please take a couple steps back? What about this dog? So look at the ears, look at the tightness. Uh, again, tightness isn't what you wanna look for. Uh, the forehead, the mouth, uh, sometimes you'll see the corners of the mouth going forward. I don't know, it's hard to tell in this photo, um, but that is a dog that is concerned. He's worried and not sure about you. And so you do not want to approach that dog. Uh, you wanna give that dog space because that's what he's asking you to do. Okay, so what about this guy? Um, there's a little bit of a mixed message here, I would say. The tail up is sort of a arousal, um, maybe not sure. I don't know if he's taking a step or if the paw is coming up. The face does look fairly relaxed. So I'm, you know, of the better safe than sorry camp. I would walk not directly towards the dog. I would walk to the side and look at the body language and see, does it change? Is he, does the tail go down and start being a like a nice loose wag rather than a scorpion wag above the body? So be safe rather than sorry, move away, communicate to the dog without directly approaching the dog and checking in. So we're checking in with how does the dog feel about you approaching? Let the dog invite the approach. Okay, so this dog does not look happy, does it? Um, and why do we say that? What are we looking for? So remember, we're looking everywhere. Uh, we're looking at the face, the eyes, the mouth, the ears, the tail, the body posture. Um, there's a little bit of a weight uh, shift with the dog, the tail is down, the ears are down. Um, I don't think that the head is down, but the mouth is closed. So it's a dog that is, I would say, unsure. But to answer the question, would you approach this dog? No, I would uh, walk away from the dog. And you could, again, back to a thing called treat retreat, tossing the treat away, letting the dog go and get the treat and then choose whether he wants to come close again. If he does choose, I would do the same thing. The dog is then getting the two reinforcers again, the distance and the treat at the end. So that way you're telling your dog, hey, don't, or this particular dog or the dog at the shelter, don't worry, I'm gonna respect your wishes. So this dog looks more relaxed. And why does it look relaxed? I mean, sitting, um, but, the ears are up, but that's just who the dog is. Um, but look at the mouth. The mouth is relaxed. There's a nice relaxed, uh, not panting, panting. The eyes look fairly soft. So this is a dog that doesn't look unhappy or uncomfortable in this situation. It's hard to imagine that there could be a bigger grin that's, than that's on this dog. Uh, this looks like a happy dog. Um, the ears are up, the eyes are fairly soft, um, and it's a relaxed, happy grin. Now, one thing just to note is the dog is sort of, it's in a chair, but it can't move. Um, and if we think back to that uh, video of the dog on the show, we will always want to be able to give the dog a way to leave or to increase the distance between the dog and yourself. And this dog, if you approach the dog, has really nowhere to go. So even though that is a huge grin on the dog's face, I would actually say, no, I wouldn't approach this dog. Um, I would let the dog get off the chair and come to me. And this is, again, not my own dog, but this is a dog that I've just met, for example, uh, at the shelter, and I don't know how he feels. And I also am aware of uh, there are stressors that have been in the background, they've come you know, into that environment. So let's give the dog benefit of the doubt um, and see what the dog chooses. Okay, so I talked a lot about dog body language, but now let's talk about the human body language. The same sort of calming signal that the dogs give each other, we can give the dogs. Now look at the picture number one where the guy is looming over the dog. He's got his hand stretched in the dog's face. 
um, and staring hard at the dog. And the dog is saying, why the face, right? Um, because that is all confrontational body language. We often, a lot of humans greet dogs like the guy in picture number one. And we don't mean anything bad by it. We don't mean to be confrontational, but that's what the dog's interpreting it. And the dog, look at the dog's ears in the picture and he's lowering his head. He's saying, I don't want you to pet me. Um, so pay attention to your body and what your body is communicating to the dog, not just the dog's body language and what they're communicating to you. Communication is a two-way street. So we have to remember that how we are orienting ourselves is communicating to the dog as well. Um, okay, lady in number two, pat, pat, pat. Um, dog's giving a lip lick, ears are down, body is kind of hunched over. Um, leaning over the dog, she's going straight towards the dogs. And we as humans uh, tend to greet frontally. We are facing directly the other person. It's much, much better with dogs to angle ourselves, be perpendicular. Um, that's far less confrontational from a dog's perspective. And she's still, even though she's pushed down, she's still leaning over, she's still in the dog's face. She's, the dog hasn't said, oh, pat me on the head, which by the way, most dogs don't love that. Um, but she's doing it anyway without an invitation. Um, hugging in number three, even though it's sideways, I like that better. Um, hugging is something that humans do. Uh, dogs don't like hugs. Do I ever hug my dog? Okay, sometimes I do hug my dog, but she puts up with it. She comes over and then I hug her and then I scratch her haunches. Um, but it's because I have a long-standing relationship with her and that's how I'm going to treat her differently than I would treat the dogs that are at Providence because I don't have that long-standing bond and relationship with them. Um, look at how huge these guys, uh, this guy's eyes are in number four. He is doing that staring hard at the dog. Now he may just be staring. He also looks worried. I'm not sure why, but he's staring hard at the dog and the dog is going to interpret that of like, oh, you are um, asking me to fight or you're saying you're going to attack me. That's what that dog potentially is reading. So staring a dog directly in the eyes is confrontational. It's a really good thing to remember. Um, okay, lady in number five, she's talk, talk about coming on too too strong. She's coming on too strong. A lot of the dog's ears back going, oh no, here, it, the storm is coming and there's nothing I can do. Um, we all are dog and cat enthusiasts. Uh, otherwise you wouldn't be watching this slideshow, but we have to be respectful to the dog and not overwhelm them. Um, and of course, number six, uh, she's not asking that dog's permission at all. She may think she's doing something wonderful to show the dog how much she loves the dog or um, is kind to the dog, but she's taken all choice away from that dog. Holding the dog's head, her face coming right at that dog's face. We all saw the video. That's not a good strategy. Okay, so the humans in this slide, they're um, behaving in a much more friendly approach for the dog. So no strong eye contact, orienting sideways, not frontally towards the dog. And, ooh, have I said this? Letting the dog approach you in their own time, letting the dog initiate the interaction. And then when the dog does, comes over like, hmm, you seem nice, let me check you out. She doesn't then swoop in at the dog, she lets the dog um, check her out first and make sure, oh, you seem nice and you haven't overwhelmed me or done anything that I consider rude. Um, keeping to the side or sort of back is very non-written. Um, and then once the dog's like, oh, you're okay, you haven't, you're, you're nice, I would like you to pet me. Then you're petting um, or stroking on the side. Um, a lot of dogs may be on the chest, but you want to just pay attention to the dog and see what the dog is telling you. You're looking at the rest of the dog's body language to make sure that the dog is okay with the interaction. The three second rule. The three second rule is um, pet your dog for three seconds or pet the dog at the shelter for three seconds and stop and wait. What you're doing is checking in with the dog saying, is it okay? Do you like me to pet you now? Um, that's what the three second rule is. Uh, when you have uh, a dog who is a little bit concerned about being pet. If you pet for three seconds and stop, 
They know that their opinion matters, that they can decide, yeah, I've had enough, or no, could you please pet me some more? And giving that piece of control to your dog when you're interacting with them is really important. Um, the dogs at the shelter, if you pet them for three seconds and stop, and then just wait and see what they tell you. That's you being really polite and respectful and paying attention to what they want. Um, and if you do that, the more you do that, you pet and stop and let them initiate the interaction, the more they will want the interaction because the more comfortable they'll be. There's a wonderful movement uh, going on, Fear Free, and you can look and see there are vets that are Fear Free certified. But lots of ways of understanding the dog and making the dog as comfortable as possible and respecting the dog's wishes. So it's wonderful to see that this is a, a movement that going forward we're going to be paying attention to our dogs more and so they can fear less. communicate a lot of information with our body movements and facial expressions. Sure, we might bark, yip, howl, or growl, but our main way of talking to you through nonverbal signaling. That's why I want you to be one of those people who can communicate with animals by reading our body language. When we are just chilling, we put on our neutral and relaxed pose. Our ears are in their natural position. Mine are floppy, and hers stick up but aren't perked forward when she's chillaxing. Our eyes are soft, and we aren't looking nervously in another direction, making the whites of our eyes show. We carry our tails in their natural state. Sure, dogs have a wide variety of tail types, but you'll learn what our tails communicate by watching them. When we catch some Zs, some dogs prefer to curl up or stretch out or even sleep in weird positions. Just like you, we don't like to be startled when we're sleeping. When we are happy to see you, we make our bodies wiggly and loose and wag our tails in a wide sweep back and forth at medium height. Some of us do a whole butt wiggle. When something gets our attention, we perk our ears forward and our pupils might dilate. Maybe you're holding a tennis ball or a treat for us. Our mouth might be a little open, but our mouth and tongue are relaxed, not tense. We might progress from slightly interested to alert and intense, and our ears and tails go up even further, and we might close our mouth, hold our breath. She gets excited too, but often feels a little bit worried. Notice how the hair on the back of the neck and tail start to get poofy. Have you ever had the hair on the back of your neck stand up? This can happen when something startles us or has us really excited or amped up and alert. Just like how we act when we're excited or interested, there are varying levels to how we act when we feel upset or anxious. An easy way to think of them is the four Fs. Fret or fidget, freeze, flight, fight. Think of these stages as survival-based reactions. It's no fun to be scared, especially when the people around us don't realize we're not okay and feeling nervous about something. So if you see these signs, take a look around and see if you can figure out what is concerning us. At the fret or fidget stage, we might avoid eye contact and turn away, but not necessarily move away. We might lick our lips, or we might pant even when we're not hot. We might move slower than normal, like we are tiptoeing around, or we could be overly active. Our ears might start to go to the side or move back a little, and we might lift one of our front paws up. If our fear continues to escalate, our tail and ears go down. Our bodies become hunched and our brow wrinkles. Our mouth might pull back into a tight smile as we pant, or our lips might begin to close and press together. We might snatch treats from your hand really hard. This is because we're nervous. We don't mean to do it. We might even be so scared that we refuse treats or become so frightened that we freeze. Think of a deer in the headlight situation. Ears, tail, and head are down. This might make the whites of our eyes show more. We breathe rapidly, but we'll probably have a closed mouth. Some of us will even tremble in fear. Flight takes place when we try to escape a situation. 
We might try to scramble away quickly or slink away slowly with our tails tucked, ears back, and body hunched. If we are panting, our mouth is tight and our tongue will be tucked up tight in our mouth instead of hanging out like when we are hot. If our previous attempts at communication have not been received, we might have to speak even louder. This is when people often label us as a bad dog, but we're just trying to tell you we are afraid. At the fight stage, we might display defensive aggression. Our ears, tail, and body are lower, and we pull our gums all the way back and show our teeth. We may warn audibly with vocal communication, such as a growl or deep bark. Sometimes dogs go unheard for so long that they learn offensive aggression. We lean forward, our ears and tail are up, and our body will look really stiff and rigid. Our eyes may look dark and have a set gaze. When we show our teeth, we pucker our lips so you can only see the front teeth. We might even lunge and bark. Please hear us before we get to this point. Don't ignore what we are trying to say. Now you know what we look like when we are relaxed, happy, alert, and excited, as well as how we might communicate fear through fret or fidget, freeze, flight, or fight. When you know what to look for, you'll realize just how much we say to people on a daily basis. Please listen to what we are saying and give us help when we need it.